Hey folks. If you look at my videos from last year, I was predicting Trump's win really early on. I was right about Hillary's demise, the behavior of the mainstream media. I'm no sticks hex and hammer, but my predictions were pretty good. But if we're being honest, it isn't because I'm some kind of oracle. Many of these outcomes were incredibly predictable to any dummy paying attention. Naturally, there were tons of things that I did not foresee happening. First, I have become so much less focused on Trump since his election. I've grown to understand that this was more about preventing Hillary from winning than it was embracing Trump wholly as a candidate. He has been a mixed bag. He's made some important strides, but is still woefully, frustratingly paused in a few ways. As long as he's helping to bring back jobs, builds the wall, and there are mass deportations, self or otherwise, I'm going to be a pretty happy camper and will vote for him again. I used to think that this was so much more about Trump than it really is. It is about the populist movement that he represented last year, which has turned into a full-fledged nationalist movement. Now that I'm saying it, this also seems like it was very predictable. And that has been perhaps the most important change of 2017. We aren't seeing the same kind of fervent nationalism in America that we are in Austria, Poland, or Germany, likely because their countries are smaller and the migration crisis poses a more visible and immediate threat to their nations. But we are seeing American nationalists become increasingly vocal and organized, even in the most liberal cities. I saw a sign that had Kate Steinle's picture on it the other day, and it said she was a dreamer too, and this was in downtown Seattle. It wasn't even defaced yet. This is driving a wedge between liberal elitists and conservatives, not just in the way that we may have a petty squabble here and there. Leftists find nationalism completely detestable, and they find identitarianism absolutely intolerable. It is becoming increasingly obvious to me, especially as I watch Seattle go down the drain, that liberals and conservatives are not growing accustomed to one another like I had hoped would be accomplished through Trump's election and the normalization of conservatism. Instead, we openly hate each other and cannot exist in the same space. In 2018, people are going to continue to leave the cities, particularly the leftist cities, and relocate to smaller farming or rural communities that are predominantly conservative, like I'm about to. And in these areas, we will rally and organize and build real communities. I'll talk about this a bit in tomorrow's video. It seems that we cannot exist in the same online spaces as well. If you thought 2017 was bad, which it was, well, 2018 is going to be the real year of censorship. As I discussed in my last video, Twitter is flailing and bans a new batch of conservatives every single day. This is only going to get worse. By the end of 2018, I think that Twitter will be a left-wing echo chamber and Gab will be a right-wing echo chamber. We're already seeing this happen. And I think that YouTube may continue to censor us as well. As you've already noticed, right-wing creators are hugely disincentivized to create content since there really isn't very much money in this any longer. There has been a real content slowdown. So first they remove incentives, then if there is still right-wing content creation going on, which there is, they have to move to outright censorship. But with crowdfunding, there's still a financial incentive to get into this and it gives us an extra layer of autonomy, even though Patreon is unreliable and we should probably start transitioning to maker support. I just created an account, um, I've linked it below. And I know it's impossible to predict the future of Bitcoin, especially after this year, but I think we're looking at another strong year. This is another way we can independently finance our projects with limited government and corporate influence. We need to have entire businesses financed with cryptocurrencies, which I will also discuss in my next video tomorrow. There really is no stopping alternative media. Some of our channels, not mine, but Black Pigeon Speaks, Stefan Molyneux, they are so big that they rival the viewership of some mainstream media shows already. And Black Pigeon Speaks is but one man who does everything on his channel, writing, producing, graphics, social media. Stefan only has one or a few employees. The mainstream media spends millions and millions of dollars and has extensive staff and overhead that need to be managed. We don't, and we are still getting the numbers. YouTube has throttled us as much as they possibly can already without banning channels outright, but people on CRTV, for example, aren't going to be ruined by that. All tech is also on the rise. I've been using Gab since my Twitter ban and it is fully functional, lots of engagement, there's a messaging service now. There are already alternatives to the media platforms that are pushing us off if 2018 is the year that they start banning us on YouTube like they have on Twitter. And Hollywood is becoming an ever more worthless propaganda tool to the left. In 1995, the American population was 266 million. Today's population has increased by almost 60 million to 325 million. Nevertheless, despite a 22% increase, movie attendance in 2017 is exactly where it was in 1995, with just 1.26 billion tickets sold, a 4% decrease over last year. The left-wing Los Angeles Times reports that movie attendance has hit a 22-year low. There is also superhero fatigue. This really only appeals to the Chinese market these days. The public is really longing for even low-budget films that have a solid plot and interesting characters. We don't care about these giant explosions in visually beautiful films that have garbage plots. 
I think that Avatar might even bomb. Hollywood needs to make patriotic fare for middle America or they will fail and they won't do it. The media is having a similar problem. They too have flung shit on the general public for too long and have laid on the propaganda far too thick. They doubled down terribly in 2017, especially with regards to the Russian narrative, sexual assault claims, and racial issues, and they have exhausted the trust of the people with their rhetoric and repeated misinformation campaigns. In my last video, I showed a clip of Mika Brzezinski drunkenly telling her audience that women aren't going to get hired anymore. Of course she's right, and at some point had a moment of realization that feminism, the media, and Hollywood have played a part in pushing women into subservient roles. And they similarly overplayed their hand when addressing racial issues. Their narrative on race is falling apart. We have seen so much terrible coverage from them this last year, not the least of which was their treatment of the black teens that kidnapped and tortured a special needs white boy who had stated racial motivations. And the general public could see that there was no looting or rioting by white people after this happened. Further, Black Lives Matter doesn't really exist anymore. It's all but a dead movement, largely because the media, with their incessant clucking, showed the American people the nature of their movement. Spin that however you want to, CNN. Eventually, everyone could see that they were a dangerous, racist, violent group. This could be the year that Hollywood, the media, and to a lesser degree, and this one is a bit of a pipe dream, the banking sector, simultaneously lose the lion's share of the power within their respective industries. Could be. Could be. Some of these things could take years, and then there are long-term concerns that could come to fruition at any time. I still think that we are going to bear witness to a huge economic event. We are still a functionally bankrupt nation with a brick on the spending pedal, breaks cut. We have a difficult future ahead of us, but I'm also feeling really hopeful as I'm watching these entities that I discussed just bite the dust. It's pretty satisfying. Thanks for watching. I'll have another video out tomorrow. Then I have some family coming into town, so I'm going to take about a week off. The podcast will return to the normal time as well. Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard time. So check it out. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.